Hello, and welcome to another ADLC digital lesson. Today, our lesson is on surface area and reaction rate. The rate of a chemical reaction depends on the surface area of the reactants. A good example of this is simple flour. Flour will burn, but if you place a match on a pile of flour, nothing will happen, except for maybe a few scorched grains where the match is placed. However, if you throw flour into the air and light it, it can react explosively. This is because we have increased the surface area of the flour, exposing much more of it to oxygen in the air. The reactants are flour and oxygen. So the more they are exposed to each other, the faster the reaction will be. This, by the way, is why great care must be taken anywhere you find grain dust. Places like grain elevators strictly forbid open flames. We can do a safe test of surface area on the rate of reaction by using Alka-Seltzer, a common medication to soothe upset stomach. Cranberry juice is quite acidic, and Alka-Seltzer is a base, so they will chemically react. You may already know about the pH scale. Acids are lower on the scale, bases are higher, and neutral is right in the middle. Cranberry juice is low on the pH scale, so when the basic Alka-Seltzer is added to it, the pH of the cranberry juice should move towards neutral. So let us try this now by adding a solid tablet of Alka-Seltzer to a specific amount of cranberry juice. We will use a pH probe to do two things. Track the pH and let us know how long it takes for the reaction to complete. As you can see, when the tablet is added, the pH of the mixture slowly begins to rise. This indicates that the Alka-Seltzer is reacting with and neutralizing the cranberry juice. As the reaction proceeds, you can see the tablet of Alka-Seltzer slowly disappear. Now this reaction actually takes quite a while, so we will speed up the video here to save some time. You can tell the reaction has completed when the pH is no longer changing. So we can conclude that this chemical reaction caused the pH to change from 3.7 to 5.8 in 191.2 seconds. But what if we try this reaction with a crushed Alka-Seltzer tablet? Crushing the tablet means that there is much more surface area of the Alka-Seltzer in contact with the cranberry juice. So we will use the same amount of cranberry juice as before and make sure we once again have our pH probe in place to track the reaction. We will then dump in our powdered Alka-Seltzer. One thing you will notice when the powder is added to the juice is that the pH changes much more rapidly than before. And if we follow this reaction all the way to the end as we did before, we will find that a very similar pH change took place, but this time in only 77.4 seconds. So in conclusion, we can see that using powdered Alka-Seltzer caused the reaction to occur in much less time. Not only that, but if you look closely at the beginning of each reaction, you can see that the line representing the powdered Alka-Seltzer is much steeper than the solid Alka-Seltzer, meaning the reaction was occurring much more rapidly with the powder. This is great proof that increasing surface area of the reactants increases reaction rate.